Bush in Bev, which is the world's largest brewing company. Yeah, so we're starting with this one because it is, in some senses, the granddaddy and consolidator within the beer industry. Remember, Anheuser Busch, located in like the middle Midwest of America, St. Paul or Minneapolis or one of those places. I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail for not knowing exactly <laughs> the city. And then it merges with the big Belgian brewer that has brands like Stella Artois and so on. But the real force behind this entire group is the Brazilian group which has put together all of this entity and is now, as you've pointed out there, the world's largest by far. Market cap, $198.6 billion. P.E. ratio of 22.2 and a dividend yield of 2.7%. The investment thesis here. Yeah, yeah. so um, this company looks quite attractive on a valuation sort of stance when you compare it to the larger company or well, to SAB, for instance. So we can invest in SAB also um, on the London Stock Exchange, not only locally, but um, still, I've, if you just compare this company to its its own history, it doesn't look too too cheap. There, um, there has been some interesting movements with um, large investors. We saw 3G Capital, you know, move into in, into Anheuser um, quite recently, and yeah, the company has added value over time. They don't have a they don't particularly have a lot of exposure to Africa, and that's why I'm assuming we're hearing all these rumors of a possible, um, you know, takeover. Bit Everybody wants SAB. a bit of Africa action. Absolutely. Paul, talk to us about the performance there. Very good. So um, there you go. That's the performance of the Anheuser Busch entity that trades in New York under the sig signal code there, Bud, because of course Budweiser is one of their premium brands. So, I mean, they pulled off the combination of that with InBev, and that was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And so it has its headquarters notionally in Belgium. But it really does now own something like seven of the world's top ten beer brands, although I suppose those sort of things do get argued about. Are they the most valuable or the most highly sold? It's got a good mix of international brands so they can take those to the periphery. It's very, very strong in Latin America, obviously, with its mm. strong Brazilian base. They bought Grupo Modelo in Mexico as well. They own all of those European brands like Bex and Stella Artois and so on. So truly a global player. Um, if you want exposure to the beverages environment, do you go for the heavyweight? Well, yeah? I mean... Well, yeah, it depends. I think it depends on where you see growth coming from. This um, this company is exposed to uh, very developed markets, markets where where people have been drinking beer for ages, and it's not um, it's not. Uh, I, I wouldn't envision a massive growth story coming out of these specific markets where when you consider a company like SAB with a larger sort of um, exposure to and a, a stronger growth plan in Asia and in Africa, there's a lot of a lot better growth story there for me. Mm. Paul, do you, do you agree with me on that front? Yeah, I think the first question you've got to ask is, is beer the consumer category you want to be in? Because what these mm. companies are, forget, you know, whether it's alcohol or whatever it is, they are consumer branded products, goods companies. So when you compare them, you've got to decide, do I rather want to own them or companies like Kraft or Unilever or Nestle or, you know, a big U.S. player like Procter & Gamble and so on. And it's fairly big. I mean, 2.3 trillion rand is a m titan. But it's about the same market cap as Amazon and Alibaba we were talking about last week with market caps of $200 billion. There are bigger companies. You know, Apple has a $700 billion market cap. And it cap. sounds from what you're saying, Mia, it doesn't have that high growth excitement that you're looking for in an investment of this nature. Well, it depends. I mean, if we, if we believe the rumors that we've been hearing where they want to take over SAB and then they'll have the exposure basically of the rest of the world, <laughs> which is, I'm not, I'm not thinking it'll be... Um, the loved story by any competition commission if you want to consider that but then they could actually add some some pretty nice exposure would you to a buy portfolio. it then on potential corporate activity no we're not buying anaza we um we prefer exposure to sab locally and then even diageo which is also a listed um global uh, sort of liquor well, company correct, there's correct. the lowdown Paul. well uh, ab inbev was up four percent in new york on friday mm. sab miller we can see in a minute has been up quite strongly after having some somewhat mixed news which we'll talk about so i think it's not inconceivable because the brazilian uh capitalist class are very ambitious at the moment you've seen all of these buyouts of Heinz. we've seen the big Brazilian 3G capital yes. you mentioned earlier with Warren Buffett's backing. So I don't think there's never going to be a time, in my opinion, when corporate debt is available at such low levels. So if you're in a corporate titan head office, you're going to be looking at these deals. Hot or not? I'm yeah. not hot on that. Not I hot. Mean. Paul, hot or not? 
Yeah, I would also go with not hot. I think there is a concern maybe that's going to be a little stressed by a potential buyout offer. And in that case, obviously, there are always issues around numbers of shares in issue, debt levels, and that sort of thing. But still an interesting company, no doubt.